Welcome to a Kofi with the FinTech Pod. We'll explore the latest trends, innovations, and ideas shaping the financial industry. Join host Alex Irigoyen as he interviews leading experts in the field. Learn from top CFO, tech leaders, investors, and many more. Join us and get inspired. Let's get started. Hi, everyone. Thank you very much, Chris, for joining us here today. I'm Alex Sirigoyen, co-founder and CEO of Coffee. And today with us, we have Chris Ortega, founder and CEO of Fresh, Fresh FPA. Chris, welcome very much to the, to the pod and thank you for, for being here. Alex, thank you so much, man. Looking forward to this opportunity. Thank you. Awesome. So Chris, you started as, a, as an auditor then you move uh, directly to roles in, in finance. And right now you have started with your own, own venture, Fresh FPA. So I don't know if you could make a little bit of introduction of where you started, how was that process moving to, to finance, and why did you move right now with, with this new project? Yeah, yeah. So for me, um, I've been in accounting, finance, FPA, and financial leadership for over 17 years primarily focused in like high growth industries so like software technology uh those kind of businesses and you know started my career like you said started my career off in public accounting like a lot of people right started off really really good experience got the opportunity to work with a lot of fortune thousand companies here in indianapolis but then alex i quickly realized that i'm not made for automate i'm not made to be like a number spell checker Uh, so then I jumped into my first entrepreneurship business where I was actually still doing accounting, but I was working mm -hmm. in like a high growth startup company, which was really, really fun. So I look at my career in like different stages. I spent the first like five to six years of my career primarily in public accounting and corporate accounting. Then I moved into FP&A and FP&A leadership. So got the opportunity to work at a pharmaceutical drug development company uh, that was publicly traded probably about. I think at the time they were about 300 million in revenue. So really, really big central laboratory locations leading our central laboratories, which was Indianapolis, Geneva, Shanghai, Singapore and Tokyo. So really, really broad kind of experience. Uh, that was a, a big company. But I've always loved like the small, medium sized scrappiness like of a startup company. So then I jumped back into another startup company, building the entire FP&A, the entire uh organization directly from scratch so coming in as like the first fpna person building the function all the way out getting a team stepping into leadership and guiding that um and then i like i, I got to that point i was like man you know i built and shaped mm -hmm. finance organizations i know what it takes to do it um i got into another software company where i was leading the entire market it was a marketing platform company We were global, leading the finance organization, and built that all the way up from about 20 employees to about 1,200 employees, from about 450,000 in revenue to about $120 million in revenue as we exited. Exit that off with SAP, so got an opportunity to build that all the way up, send it off to exit to SAP. And then, Alex, I found myself at this fork in the road where I'm like, do I continue going down the, the CFO route, like continue to leave and build finance organizations, or do I start my own business? And I started Fresh FP&A with the intention that I felt like there needed to be a fresh perspective on finance. Like there needs to be a fresh perspective on the people. There needs to be a fresh perspective on the value. So I started Fresh FP&A. Um, as a side hustle, six or seven years ago, it was like my side hustle as I was like having full uh, full time finance leadership job and, and VP of finance job. And then uh, I went at it full time and it'll be a year in February that I have started Fresh FP&A full time. So it's been quite the journey. That's that's awesome. Uh, what is exactly what you do right now at uh, Fresh FP&A? Are you working, helping with some other firms? We see also that you are doing a lot of interviews, a lot of content, a lot of say, working with seminaries and, and so on. What, what is exactly what, what you are doing right now at Fresh FPNA? Yeah, so Fresh FPNA, we have four different uh, service lines that we offer. The first one is your traditional fractional CFO. So myself and my team, we actually lead the finance organization for uh, businesses. Um, primarily focused on like high growth businesses. So that could be SaaS, that could be retail, that could be technology. Um, and we completely lead that finance organization. So 
Uh, that's our uh, primary service line is fractional CFO services. The second thing that we do is we help organizations transform and scale and actually build in their finance transformational roadmap. So we work with organizations to develop the six, eight, 12, and 18 month vision, strategy, tactics, milestones, and metrics that they need to get down the road of financial transformation. So that's more project consulting work. My team helps support that. Uh, also, again, from the fractional CFO side and the financial transformational side, we're a global organization. So we have clients in the US, Europe, and Asia. Um, the third product line that we have as well is like we do, I do a lot of thought leadership. I do a lot of webinars. I do a lot of podcasts. I do a lot of conferences. I, I do a lot of thought leadership in the finance, FPA, and CFO space. And then the, the fourth function and the fourth service that we offer is um, we offer product marketing to companies. A lot of times companies reach out to Fresh FPA and they want to understand how does a modern finance, how does a modern finance organization have value? How does a modern CFO like lead an organization? So we help them intimately know what it means to be a modern or what we like to call a fresh CFO. Um, so those are the different product service lines that we have and how we support clients at Fresh FPA. That's that's awesome. Thank you very much for the for the content. You just mentioned, Chris, about fractional CFOs. This is definitely a trend that we see a lot. Why do you think is this becoming such a such a trend? Many CFOs that have been working in other firms, they are moving to being a, a fractional CFO or having a portfolio of multiple companies. Why do you think this is this change is, is happening? I think this is a huge, um, like even going 10,000 level feet, like the, the the value of any fractional resource, not only just a CFO, but the value of a fractional CMO, the, vac the uh, fractional CRO, the value that these bring to organizations is, is instantly, right? Like when you think about the macro environment that we're in right now, right? You have a lot of organizations that may not necessarily be investing in new resources. They're not bringing on new headcount. Um, unfortunately, you still see in the news a lot of companies going through massive amounts of layoffs. But the thing is, is like there's still demand for talent. Like there's still work that needs to get done. There's still strategies to build. There's still tactics to execute. There's still metrics to measure. Right. So mm -hmm. organizations are saying, hey, we can't we don't have the luxury of going to go hire uh, full time resources, but we still need that expertise or what I like to say, the batteries included. So this is where a fractional uh, a fractional CFO and the, the value that we provide to organization is we come with the skills, the passions, the talents, the experience that you need to help build and shape or scale your finance organization at a fraction of the time, energy and effort that it would take to go hire that full time CFO. Right. If you look at the cost that goes into like hiring a CFO, it's not just the salary. It's the bonus. It's the recruiting. It's the investment time of people, all the, the, all the fully loaded cost that goes into it. And then you look at the lead time that you, OK, you get that CFO in the door, but there's still like four to six months before they're actually like operational. So I mm -hmm. think to me, like organizations that need that horsepower, that need that expertise, they need those fractional resources, particularly a, FP&A, a, a fresh FP&A that have been there and done that that come with those experiences right out the gate. Um, and I, I see this as a trend, not only, like I said, for CFOs, but other fractional roles as well, too. I have an extensive network of people that are fractional CMOs, that are fractional chief revenue officers, that are chief uh, human resource officers that are really, really having a lot of value. And plus, I think the second piece of that is it provides a lot of flexibility. One of the things that um, I tell myself and my team here at Fresh fp &A is like, we have the ability to focus over quality versus the quantity of clients like that's not we develop. And the thing that we're major focused on in our relationship with our clients is like we don't want to be another vendor. We don't want to be another contractor. We don't want to be another consultant. We want to help you along your journey and empower you, enable you and give you the skills, expertise and experience that you need to be successful in the future. So I think it's a major trend that's here to stay. Um, and a lot of people are capitalizing on an opportunity to to do something new. That's that's awesome. So, for example, Chris, for a company that is thinking about hiring a fractional CFO, is there a particular stage where they should start looking for for this type of of service? 
is there a, a stage where you're going to transition from fractional to a full-time CFO? How do you see more or less where does it this is it a good fit for a to, to hire a fractional CFO? I think it, at any stage of businesses, right? Um, when I look at our portfolio of clients, we have clients all the way down from like seed to enterprise level multinational clients that we help support. Um, and I think the earlier, the better, right? So the reason why I say it, it's really good to bring on a fractional CFO, even if you're a seed level company or maybe you're a series A, right? The thing about a fractional CFO bringing them on early is like you, you get that expertise of a lot of the pitfalls as you scale, right? So you're bringing in a person that have taken like like people come to Fresh FP&A and we and we share and we talk about my team. We all have experiences of building finance organizations completely from scratch and growing them to be an enterprise level or sending them off to an exit. So having that knowledge and bringing that fractional CFO early on in your business, you're able to lay a lot of that foundation for the finance organization of the future with the best expertise. Right. You, you get people that have been there, done that. They have the mistakes, they have the failures, they have the what could go wrongs, they have the things that went right, and you bring in that expertise earlier on. So when you think about your uh, your business three, four, five years from now, because you brought in that fractional CFO early, right, now you're able to scale a lot faster, right? And then maybe you bring in, maybe you have that fractional CFO, and a lot of, this may go counterintuitive, but a lot of times I tell our clients, like, we've done a great job when you have like said to us hey chris like we feel empowered we feel enabled you gave us everything that we needed to be successful now we're ready to bring in that full-time talent we're ready to bring in that cfo or that vp of finance or that controller we have now got the tools we got the expertise we got the knowledge we've got the foundational framework that we can scale off of so to me i think it doesn't really matter on this stage I would advertise and tell any business owner that's looking at this, bringing in that fractional expertise earlier on in the process is just going to help you scale as your business continues to grow and as you continue to acquire new customers. Awesome. Thank you. And um, what does a company need to be looking for in a in a fractional CFO? Is it going to be this the, the set of skills that they have? Is it going to be something more related with their past activities or their past jobs? Should it be something where it's more like a referral? So some other company friend is working with this fractional CFO and then I should look for for working with this exact person. What 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 process should a company do? while when looking for a for a fractional CFO? I think definitely like any business, like a lot of CEOs, a lot of founders and a lot of uh, uh, owners that we work with at Fresh FPNA, I always tell them to do their due diligence, right? Because the thing about the CFO and particularly about the fractional CFO space is like there's people that are like they're controllers, but they they call themselves like fractional CFOs, right? So their value that they may be giving to you is bookkeeping and accounting, and they may add on like some some a little bit of strategic, right? Then you have the other spectrum where you have like our our business, right? One of the things that Fresh FPNA is we don't provide like bookkeeping and accounting services to our clients. Like we are one hundred percent focused on the strategic outlook and all the strategies and tactics that go along strategically leading a finance organization. Now, if a client needs accounting services or need bookkeeping services, I have an extensive network of uh, accounting partners that I work with, right? But that's a key differentiator is like, no, are you getting like a controller that has CFO add-on services or are you truly getting that strategic partner? I think that's the first thing. The second thing is, is like understanding that there's a lot of fractional CFOs that they're, they're niche and they're very experts, right? There's some fractional CFOs that come from particularly the tax background, right? Like they are your tax expert when it comes to compliance, when it comes to risk, when it comes to, you know, the tax side of your business, you may have a fractional CFO, like, like that's 100% of the dedicated on it. So I think the second place for owners and business owners to think about is what is that pain that you're seeing in the business, right? Is it you're not getting your employees on time? Is it you know, you don't have that future visibility into your organization, or is it you really just don't have like the accounting and the transactions right? Really intimately know your pain that you're having in your organization, and then go complement that fractional CFO that has that service or has that scale. Uh, like I said, at Fresh FPNA, we have the full scale, right? 
We have the accounting that we can handle on with a great list of partners that I've worked with, that my team have worked with in their career that can help take care of that. And then we're your strategic advisor, we're your, your CFO to help you strategically think about your business. So you want to make sure that uh, those are the things that you're looking for in your fractional CFO. Um, and I, I tell every I tell every client, make sure you do your due diligence, right? Like everybody at Fresh FPNA, like we have been VPs of finance, we have been CFOs, we have been managers at FPNA. Like we come from this space, right? We just don't write content about it. We live it, we breathe it, we do it. This is something that our business is a hundred percent focused on and where our experience has come from. So I think to me, those are the three things that any business owner, when they're thinking about hiring a fractional CFO, that's the level of due diligence you need to do. Super, super helpful, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now let's assume you are a CFO that you've been working for multiple years in, in the same firm or different firms, and you are thinking about moving to become a fractional CFO. There's definitely, definitely some different things that you have to develop while becoming your own business right which is type of being a fractional cfo so what tips would you give to those thinking about moving from becoming from being a regular cfo to moving into being a, a fractional fractional cfo are there going to be new setup of skills that they have to develop or what do you think are, are the, the the key factors that they they have to consider yeah, this is a great question, Alex. And I get asked in my global community on this a lot. And I'll be honest with everybody. This is something that I'm learning too as well, right? Like I started my career in kind of the consultancy space with Ernst & Young, right? I grew up, I was leading audits, I was senior in audits. And then, uh, you know, fast forward 18 years later, right? And now back at that same point, right? So I think the number one thing is, is like, if you want to make that leap, and I, I did it, right? So before starting Fresh FPNA a year ago, full time and going at it full time, Fresh FPNA was like my passion project alongside having like a full time job for like six to seven years, right? So, like, I was doing consultancy, I was doing financial leadership, I was leading some projects, I was doing a lot of thought leadership as well as having a full time job. So, for me, it was like that side project that I was doing and I was grooming it, I was learning. Um, and I tell a lot of people that maybe that is a good, you know, when I made the leap over to Fresh FPNA, the last company that I was actually a part of, where things unfortunately didn't work out, they actually became one of the first clients that we brought on as a fractional CFO client in Fresh FPNA. So I I, I strongly recommend everybody that making that transition, uh, you know, to go full time and part time, maybe you ease into it, right? Maybe you test the market out. Maybe you you try to find exactly what you want to do. Maybe you want to niche, you want to find the niche of clients you want to work with, or you don't want to niche. I think experimenting as, as you have that safety net of your full-time job to be able to do it, right? That's how I did it. Um, but they also have had like connections and people that I've talked with that have completely like quit their full-time job and go after it full-time. But I think the number one thing is to know is like, know your value, know the skills that you're bringing into it and like truly what are your intentions around it right so my intention when i started fresh fpna is like and i get to ask this question they're like chris what's the goal of fresh fpna and i'm like you know they're like do you want to grow it to like 10 million dollars 20 million dollars you want to have an exit i don't really think about it in terms of like money right i never equated the value that i'm bringing and the impact that i want to make uh, on the money that i'm making around it i want to empower and enable and I want us as a team to use our skills, passions, talents, and experience to help others realize and achieve greatness. That is the goal of Fresh FPNA. And as long as we're doing that, as long as we're providing value to clients, as well, as long as we're empowering other people, that's really the objective. So I think to me, know your niche, know what your values are, know what skills that you want to provide, what kind of clients you want to serve, and what kind of regions you want to serve. And truly know, like, okay, if this did blow up, like, how do you scale yourself, right? Um, a big area that I'm getting a lot of learning from, and in my first year that I'm sharing with others, is just like, how do you build the infrastructure around? Like, how do you build the technology that your firm needs? How do you build like the business development side? How do you build the marketing side? How do you build not only just the financial side of your organization? But when you make that transition, you're wearing all the hats. You're the, the CEO, you're the business manager, you're the payroll person, 
you have to be able to know like how do you build the infrastructure around to support your fractional CFO business. So that would be my advice for anyone thinking about making that leap from a full time job to going full time to fractional CFO or thinking about doing it as a as a side hustle. Yeah, I, I agree. Those are really, really good, great points. You mentioned about the infrastructure. So let's say when you are working with uh, you are a CFO, you are in a company, you probably have a, a lot of people working together with you. But then eventually you're going to be working with five, ten different customers, right? So how do you leverage technology to have that infrastructure that that can help you? Where do you see the, the trend of technology related to fractional CFO going, and how a fractional CFO can leverage that technology to make their the work better? Yeah, I think technology is a huge value proposition, not only for fractional CFOs, but CFOs overall, right? Um, we need to be more technology adoption, right? Like a lot of times when you look at our industry, we've been technology laggers, meaning that there's a laundry list of checklists of things we have to go through before we adopt the technology. But if you look at our uh, partners in marketing, if you look at our partners in sales, like their technology, like they're, they're the first ones. They're like, let's test something out and see if it works. I'm not saying we need to get to that level of like just testing it out and just see if it works. But we need to be more, not laggers, we need more technology adopters inside the organization. And running a fractional CFO business where you're able to use a tool or technology, consolidate, hey, I got this client that I'm working with, I got these three other ones, I'm able to have like a consistent view of all of their data, all of their insights, I think provides huge value to organizations. And it's not just the, the, the financial planning analysis technology, it's also all the backend technology, right? Like the, the technology used to run your content, the technology used to pay your contractors or employees, uh, the technology that you use to manage your opportunities, the CRM. It is literally like, as you're a CFO, you're running that business and you're working with those various stakeholders I think another, if I was to give one person a super piece of advice is you're a fractional CFO. So one of the things that I've taken and built on for Fresh FP&A is like I've leveraged fractional resources inside of my business, right? So like I have a fractional leader that helps run our uh, content marketing. I have a fractional leader that helps run our business development. I have a fractional leader that helps run our you know, client support and operations. I have a fractional support that's like my technology person that helps with the website and a lot of technology, things that we do. So you've got to think about how you build that arsenal of people around you that not only help you support clients, but also help you support the business. And I think technology is huge around that. And particularly as you're working with clients too, like having that ability to be able to have a one-stop shop where you can have all your client data, whether it's QuickBooks data, FreshBooks data, whatever data source that they have, and be able to slice and dice and provide insights and access so every client can have one point of contact to be able to see their data and the insights, hugely, hugely valuable. That's that's awesome. Thank you very much, Chris, for all the all the insights. I think this is going to be super useful both for new fractional CFOs and also for firms thinking about learning or hiring a, a fractional CFO. If we wanna connect with you, if we wanna know more about Chris Ortega and Fresh FPA, where can we where can we go? Yeah, so uh, if you want to connect with me, happy to answer any questions. Uh, if you want to learn more about Fresh FPA, visit our website, www.freshfpa.com. Um, also, make sure to follow Fresh FPA on all of our socials. It's just Fresh FPA. Um, and then also on LinkedIn as well, too. Just type in Chris Ortega. Happy to connect with you. That's where you can learn more about us. Happy to help support and scale and transform your finance organization. So those will be the resources. Incredible. Chris, it's been a, a pleasure to have you here today in the, in the pod. I'm very excited and looking forward to see where Fresh FPA goes. We're definitely following you in all, all social media and excited to, to give this conversation and, and learn where, where it takes you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you for everybody watching this and make sure to go check out coffee as well, too. It's a tremendous tool. Awesome. Thank you very much, Chris.